Liverpool made it three wins in a row as they beat West Ham United 2-1 at the London Stadium to move sixth in the league table. In today's video, we'll discuss the major talking points from the clash, whilst also going over all the latest Liverpool news from the last 24 hours. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Before we get into today's video, as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. While Trent Alexander-Arnold resembles the new poster boy for Liverpool's academy, his story is a rarity with countless of other youngsters being left behind. Towards the end of every season, academy director Alex Inglethorpe holds meetings with young players whose contracts are almost up. Some will be offered extensions and others will be directed to interested clubs. For many though, they will be informed of their release. This is not only the case for players already on the radar, but also those within pre-academy ranks who for one reason or another have not made the grade. Alexander-Arnold has now launched the After Academy, an initiative that will provide career opportunities for former academy players who wish to forge a new career path outside of professional football. Supported by the PFA, the After Academy is designed to support those who have not made it as footballers in finding a new path. Led by Inglethorpe himself, Liverpool already have an Almuni project in place to support those who have departed the academy, but the club have also pledged to work with the After Academy through its own programme. Alexander-Arnold's partners, Red Bull, Under Armour and Therabody have committed to offering opportunities as a part of the new initiative. That includes jobs, work placements and internships across various departments. Alexander-Arnold said, I loved my time at the Liverpool Academy, it gave me everything I have today and I'm so grateful to be in the position I'm in. That feeling of lifting trophies for your childhood club is magical and I wouldn't swap it for anything in the world. But if things didn't work out the way they did, I could have been one of those being told the dream is over. I'm fortunate to not know what that conversation is like, but I know from my friends and other former players how hard it hits and how tough it can be. I'm proud of this programme as it looks to give another chance to those who didn't make it, and I hope it's just the first step towards a brighter future for these young players. The After Academy platform will go live later this year with further information available via Trent and the PFA's channels closer to launch. There is no optimism with industry circles that UEFA will take money out of the pockets of teams like Liverpool in order to increase its solidarity payments, Football Insider has informed us. That is despite recent calls from the European League organisation for UEFA to increase the cash that it distributes to clubs not participating in the Champions League, Europa League or Conference League. While the exact amount varies from year to year, it is understood that around 4% of UEFA's club competition revenue will be distributed to non-participating clubs by the end of the 2022-2023 season, equating to around £119 million. For context, Liverpool alone earned £106.2 million from UEFA during their run to the Champions League final in 2021-2022. The solidarity payment pot, by contrast, is split between over 650 clubs after it is distributed to national associations. The European leagues, the body that represents 40 leagues, including the Premier League and EFL, on governance matters is now lobbying for a 10% share of eligible revenues. Based on this season's figures, that setup would see £297.5 million go to non-participating clubs around Europe annually. But industry sources have told us that even with UEFA revenue set to grow following the introduction of the expanded Champions League from 2024-2025, there is little hope that this increase can be achieved. The European League has no constitutional mechanism through which to bring about the change and is effectively relying on its lobbying power and goodwill from UEFA. Sources have told us that relations between the two bodies have grown stronger since they faced down the mutual threat posed by the breakaway Super League plot in April 2021. But that alone is not enough to get European football's governing body to reallocate the significant portion of its wealth away from its stakeholders, namely elite clubs like Liverpool. As we mentioned in the intro, Liverpool made it three wins from three as they beat West Ham United to move sixth in the Premier League table. In this part of the video, we'll discuss the five major talking points from the clash. Minimal changes, but maximum bench impact. The boss has kept the lineup largely the same over the past few weeks, perhaps preferring to stick with a not losing formula over reintegrating those who might otherwise be considered starters. 
While not in principle a terrible idea, we were witnessing a few players who do not usually either get the chance or fare well when starting multiple matches in a row. Curtis Jones barely played for five months but now has been given five league starts in a row. Jordan Henderson's multi-game endurance has been a factor for some time and Diego Jota is still recovering his full level after a long-term injury. However, of more note was the boss making earlier subs and the right ones. Thiago and Luis Diaz replacing the ineffective Henderson and Jota before the hour mark. The bench certainly looks deeper now and immediately after Thiago's entrance, the Reds looked a more controlled team on the ball, more creative in the final third. Klopp was particularly animated on the touchline and extremely vocal. It almost seems as though this end to the season is being used as a tactical preparation for next season. Captain's involvement At least two at Manchester City, and that would be kind Martinelli against Arsenal, Gibbs White last time out against Forest, and tonight Lucas Paqueta's opener. What they all have in common is fairly routine, a lack of defensive tracking, speed to get back or ability to make a telling challenge from our number 14, Jordan Henderson. That's just in the last 25 days too, and this trend goes back far, far longer. And we're not referencing the many which didn't go in either, such as when Virgil van Dijk had to tip away a low cross which Henderson couldn't stop from Benarama on the counter. The captain simply isn't having any consistently positive impact defensively, and isn't able to keep pace with transitions and doesn't have the individual physicality to stop opponents one-on-one. -on -one. The captain was first off before the hour mark, and whatever Klopp might say after the game about minutes and management performance, there's no doubt it played a part here. Set-piece prowess Once upon a time, Coppites jokingly referred to themselves as penalty pool, reveling and have been missing them anyway, but our set-piece prowess has very much returned. Forest were essentially felled through them at the weekend, and tonight Joel Matip funded in a fantastic header off a corner. The more of those we can add in the fight, and maybe just keeping our top four hopes alive, though that's firmly out of our hands for now. Trent's role here to stay. It was Joel Matip replacing Canate, which was perhaps the surprise of the pre-match, given Joe Gomez can cover the full-back area better in the system. But without either of the speedier pair who are comfortable in the channel on the pitch, Trent Alexander-Arnold still played his more central role in possession. Clearly, it's here to stay. In terms of the number 66, he was excellent on the ball and aggressive defensively in those more forward areas, but still some work is needed from he and others in who fills the right back area on transitions. Matip, meanwhile, fared well in physical battles with Antonio for the most part, although the forward did escape for chances of set plays. On to Spurs after breaking the curse. The last time we'll wear the less than popular dizzying weird white kit, we finally break the curse of the season and win it for the first time. Now if we can wear the immense green one on the final day at Southampton to clinch a top four finish, all will be right within the world. Anyway, it's five without defeat now, three wins in a row and the gap is closed to a few teams above us. We've moved above one, two, Tottenham, who just happened to face next time out. There's no excuse left at home and wins are the only thing allowed, so keep the run going, keep the points accumulating and we'll see what magic might yet happen. Three home games in eight days, three wins and who knows how this season may end. Liverpool fans, what did you make of the win yesterday and whereabouts do you think we'll finish in the league? Let me know your league position predictions down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. Please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. We do have Liverpool merchandise available on our website, so do browse the collection by going down into the link in the description or going to copiteclothing.com. We do offer free UK shipping. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Push.